Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to my another video, and today I'm going to be reacting to a T Rex vs Spinosaurus fight simulation. This video is made by Goji Center, and yeah, as usual, I'm going to put the video link down in the description below. And without further ado, let's start the video. created and imagined by millions. The battle between the most terrifying predators ever seen, the Tyrannosaurus Rex versus the Spinosaurus. Oh, yeah. Today we will uncover the hard stats studying these two extinct predators in detail while analyzing their attack methodologies, agility, terrain, and other auxiliary weapons that will dictate who will survive to see the next day and who will cease to exist. Okay. For the very first time, we'll witness all data discussed here compiled into a combat simulator featuring both dinosaurs in a fight to the death. Coming up, Tyrannosaurus Rex versus the Spinosaurus. All right. Corporal Builds. This battle has been a topic of debate for decades, but only seen on screen with renditions that are now considered outdated. Today, the simulator will be using relatively updated renditions of these two dinosaurs, beginning with Tyrannosaurus Rex. Throughout the years, it has been believed that this theropod was one of the largest of its kind, dwarfing mm. all of its predecessors. In this simulation, we will be taking into account the sizes of two of the larger specimens recovered, maxing out this T-Rex to up to 13 meters in length. In terms of height, this creature would have measured 4 meters at the hip. You will notice how this newer rendition of the T-Rex is actually much bulkier than the pop culture depictions seen in films and previous documentaries. As seen here, this creature's bone structure also reflects its heavy build, allowing this creature to weigh as much as 8.9 thousand kilograms, or approximately up to 9.7 US tons. Given its proportions, this creature now ranks as one of the heaviest and largest theropod predators in history. Its opponent, the Spinosaurus, has been the topic of much discussion throughout the last 20 years due to its ever-changing dimensions, body shape, and capabilities. We now know, thanks to the most recent studies, that this theropod was actually a bit more robust than what we imagined back a couple of years ago. We will be taking these Spinosaurus' remains when generating a contestant for this simulation, giving us a dinosaur that can reach lengths of up to 15 meters and a height of 2.3 meters, five at the tallest spine. Weight-wise, the results are a bit surprising. While it is true that the Spinosaurus has a seemingly lighter build than the T-Rex, recent estimates have placed the Spinosaurus's weight from 7 to 8.3 US tons to around 10 tons. This was due to many factors seen through more recent digital models that Godzilla. suggest that this creature was more stockier than anticipated. Okay, in point? addition to that, a new study released in 2022 stated that this animal's bones were much more dense, which would also contribute to its heavy build. By putting these factors into account, we see that the difference between corporal dimensions has now diminished considerably compared to previous assumptions. The next thing to analyze is how these builds aided in their forms of movement, agility, and speed. Locomotion. While it is obvious that the Tyrannosaurus was clearly adapted for terrestrial locomotion, its actual speed on land has been fiercely disputed. Recent computer modeling and other analyses have concluded that an adult T-Rex was not capable of running as we know it. It wasn't able to perform a running gait, which is the act of having both feet off the ground while running. But it could do what is known as a fast walk. Recently, it's now estimated that a T-Rex at full speed could reach anywhere around 5 meters per second or 11 to 18 miles per hour. Although this may not seem very fast, recent studies have found evidence that this T-Rex was more agile than we think. Not too long ago, a group of researchers argued that this dinosaur's ilia, the bone in the upper part of the hip, was adequate for allowing the Rex to pivot from one direction to another like a figure skater from hell. The team took into account centers of mass to rotational inertia, making the T-Rex's agility score higher compared to other similar-sized theropods. Unfortunately for Spinosaurus, there are no published reports on the Spino's maximum speed on land. But based on its reduced leg size, we can guess that this creature was not a terribly fast mover, possibly moving to speeds slower than the T-Rex or equal at the most. The obvious go-to for a locomotive advantage would have been a nearby body of water. 
Yes, there has been debate on whether the Spino was a good swimmer, but again, the study mentioned earlier gave further evidence that this dinosaur could not only swim well, but also dive deep into the water. This dinosaur was said to have osteosclerosis, which is a condition of having denser, bony material. This was also accompanied by possible pachyostosis, which is the thickening of certain bones. Apart from being able to submerge itself, this animal's tadpole paddle-like tail was evidence that this animal could move through an aquatic environment and capable of exerting eight times the force of other theropods. But what about the T-Rex? New evidence discovered by Scott Persons and team suggested that this animal could in fact travel by water from time to time thanks to claw marks on a riverbed that were 50 feet apart from each other. But not well enough like its rival, the Spinosaurus. Now that we know yeah, how these creatures are move, really good let's swimmers. quickly go over how well these things can stay upright. Stability. Getting tipped over in a fight with dinosaurs of these dimensions could be fatal. By observing both of these creatures' centers of gravity, we find that the T-Rex's was located in a much higher position than the Spinosaurus. Yeah. Proportionally, this means that the Spino does indeed have a wider stance thanks to its shorter legs and auxiliary front limbs. Because of this, if both T-Rex and Spino were hit in the same location, the Spinosaurus would be harder to knock down. Not to mention that recent observations also suggested that this Spinosaurus could rear up on its hind legs and use its tail as a third limb for stability thanks to its closer proximity to the ground compared to the T-Rex. But which of these creatures would be intelligent enough to figure out these stabilizing intricacies? Intelligence. One thing to note is that intelligence is a very difficult thing to figure out for animals, especially extinct creatures. The best methods of studying this is with brain scans and analyses of their sensorial organs that would have been there. There has not been enough research to properly determine the intelligent quotients of Spinosaurus. The closest we are to understanding its brain capability is a study done on the neuroanatomy of Irritator Challengeri, a relative of the Spinosaurus. Research shows that this animal's nervous system was adapted for picking up low-frequency sounds and special vertical head movements to sense and catch prey. That's all we know about the close relative of the Spinosaurus, but given that the Spino is armed with similar weaponry, we can assume that this creature had to understand how to use these effectively and with purpose. The T-Rex is another story. There are many studies done on determining the intelligence of this animal, many which find that the olfactory organs of the T-Rex were disproportionately enlarged. Another finding is that these creatures had binocular vision, capable of seeing almost four times better than the average human and being able to see clearly for up to six kilometers. To understand its thinking processes better, the T-Rex was measured at 1.0 in the encephalization quotient, which is the same as a crocodile. But more recent scans have bumped this creature up to a 2.0 to 2.4 score, which is better than rodents, canines, and some felines, and only a tenth of a point short of a chimpanzee, suggesting that the T-Rex indeed had complex problem-solving capabilities and was a very analytical creature, capable of determining strengths and weaknesses to far greater levels than ever imagined. The only things left to discuss are their weapons. Bite effectiveness. It may come as a surprise to you, but both of these animals had bites that could inflict some serious damage to each other, depending on a few factors. Bite force as we know it can vary greatly on the number of teeth, surface areas of the bite, musculature, and width of the jaw. Every bite is different. The teeth of a Tyrannosaurus rex are widely known for their pickaxe shape and small serrated edges. This, combined with its wide jaw and strong neck muscles, give the T-Rex a bite force of about 8 to 10,000 pounds per square inch. Previously, we have seen larger estimates, such as 12,800 PSI, but truth is that it really just depends where exactly you measure it. If all of this force is exerted on just one tooth, for example, this could reach up to 431,342 PSI. A bite from a Tyrannosaurus Rex would most likely be inflicted using these areas of its jaw, giving us this figure, ranking it at the top of all theropod bite forces. This bite was so strong that it could crush flesh and bone alike with ease, and go as far as possibly eating these bones as well. The Spinosaurus, on the other hand, had a narrower jaw, but this does not necessarily mean that its bite was at all weak. 
Again, yeah. as mentioned earlier, the amount of teeth and shape greatly affect the amount of pressure exerted on a victim. In the Spinosaurus case, its bite force pressure would best be concentrated in these areas. These teeth were best fit for biting down and gripping, which was useful when hunting for prey underwater. But exactly how strong was this bite? There is no study that gives us an exact number, but here's what is known. A study held in 2013 indicated that this skull was resistant to torque and tension stresses with vertical movements, meaning that this skull was well adapted for inflicting strong bites. In 2005, the bite force of many theropods were studied, including Suchomimus, a distant relative. After using mathematical scaling, it is reasonable for some parts of the Spinosaurus's jaw to exert anywhere between 4,250 to 5,200 psi, ranking its bite force among theropods higher than originally thought. Of course, if we compare both bite forces, the Tyrannosaurus rex still far surpasses the strength of the Spino. But in order to cause severe damage, it is not necessary to reach these levels. To kill the opponent, these jaws must be able to clamp deep enough to cause bleeding or tear through vital organs. Yep. The Spinosaurus would now also rely on an additional set of weapons. Auxiliary Weaponry Now let's cover the last set of weapons that will be used in this battle. Both of these animals bring two arms tipped with sharp claws, but greatly vary in size. The two-fingered arms of a T-Rex have been an interesting topic of debate for many researchers, given that these are unproportional for its size. But contrary to what you may think, these things were not weak. This bicep muscle alone would be able to lift more than 400 pounds each. Some believe that these were used to hold on to mates, assist when standing, or even to grapple prey. The problem with this third method is that in order to use these in combat, the T-Rex would have to stand too close to the Spinosaurus in order to use them, making biting more difficult and putting itself at risk. And in this particular battle scenario, the Spino wouldn't sit motionless waiting for the Rex to get this close. On the contrary, it would resort to using its own arms. As noted by researchers, these three-fingered arms were not as reduced as its hind legs, suggesting that these held a critical role in this animal's everyday life, especially when hunting. If observed closely, there are two large claws on these hands, one which measured almost one foot in length. Other observations conclude that these arm attachments are similar to what is seen in modern-day bears, animals with almost supernatural swing forces meaning that these could slash and pull back, causing even more damage. But is this the limit? We also must factor in the centrifugal forces of the swing, the slight rotation of its body, and the body weight behind the strike, resulting in an enormous swing impact at the end of the Spinosaurus's claws. A firm impact to the body of any opponent would reach forces of up to half a ton to a full ton on a small surface, enough to daze or fracture the head of a large theropod if hit correctly. And with a big claw to project all this force into a smaller area, this could potentially be lethal. Uh -oh. Weaknesses. Before we finish entering the data into the battle simulator, we must debunk a few misconceptions associated with these animals. The T-Rex, as mentioned earlier, did have the ability to swim, but wouldn't have been able to deep dive like the Spinosaurus. By comparing both animals' bone density, the Spino's femur denseness indicates that this animal was in fact much more dense than the Rex was in the water. Mm. Although the terrestrial yes. mass seems to favor the T-Rex on land, it's a completely different scenario in a watery arena. A misconception associated with the Spinosaurus is the myth that once this creature breaks its long spines, then it would die immediately. This does not necessarily make sense, since the spinal cord is housed inside something called a vertebral foramen. The spine itself is an attachment or an extension of the vertebrae called a process. Any breakage that would happen if the spino rolled over violently would happen along this area of the spine. Far enough for a spino to not get handicapped in a fight should the T-Rex decide to bite or knock down a Spinosaurus. Interestingly, there has been evidence found that suggests that these can heal over time if they are injured. According to the data that we've entered into the simulator, and given the types of creatures that will be opposing each other, there are two possible scenarios that could occur in a confrontation between the Spinosaurus and the T-Rex. Keep in mind that this confrontation would have never happened in the real world, yeah. since they lived in different time periods and different geographical locations. 
Because the Spinosaurus is also adapted for aquatic mobility and subaqueous foraging, it would also make sense for a confrontation to happen alongside a riverbank, or even in the water itself. Yes. With the T-Rex approaching the riverbank because it considers it as a source of water, and the Spinosaurus as a source of both water and food. We are now ready to fire this simulation. The Tyrannosaurus Rex brings a stocky build, armed with jaws that can crunch through flesh and bone, abnormally agile capabilities, and advanced problem-solving skills. The Spinosaurus enters the fight with a surprisingly stable corporal build, which is highly maneuverable in an aquatic arena, a firm bite with a strong grip, and two extremely dangerous forearms capable of delivering lethal blows to an opponent. We will now initialize the first simulation. I think the T-Rex will win. But I don't know. Fight to the death. All right. Okay. Not that in a real life confrontation such as this would ever be. Over. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, we have a spino eating a fish or whatever it is. And we have a T-Rex. We should be in this one. Oh, one hit for the spine though. Lexi fought back. He just torn the Spinosaurus arm apart. Oh. Alright, the Lexi one. Tyrannosaurus Rex pulls off a win. Given that this was 100% a fully terrestrial scenario, the Tyrannosaurus Rex held the edge when it came to ground locomotion. The next big factor in this simulation is that this T-Rex's problem solving played a critical role in the victory of this dinosaur. While this T-Rex is built in such a way that it could withstand heavy damage, the Spinosaurus was able to land four hits in the initial part of this fight thanks to its superior forearm range. Upon already receiving heavy blows, an intelligent predator like the T-Rex would understand that getting rid of this weapon would be critical if he were to get out of this one alive. Which is why this animal went for the arm, and with its immense bite force and strong neck muscles, the Rex was able to critically injure this Spinosaurus. While trying to retreat to the safety of the river, the T-Rex now knocks the Spinosaurus down on the opposite side of its body against the side that is no longer capable of holding itself. And with a definitive bite to the neck, it ends the Spinosaurus. But what if this battle happened in the water? In well, this scenario, the T-Rex sees won. a Spinosaurus for the first time and has no idea that this creature is more dangerous in this aquatic medium. Spinosaurus, being the better swimmer, positions in a way that allows it to injure the T-Rex repeatedly. Seeing it is outmaneuvered in the water, a Tyrannosaurus Rex would most likely want to retreat to its preferred terrestrial habitat. Weakened and in 
injured, the Tyrannosaurus Rex would most likely lose this fight. Given the density of the Spinosaurus, another likely outcome would be the Spinosaurus's more dense body aiding in sinking the T-Rex in deeper water, where the T-Rex would most likely be completely out of its element and consequently die. On land, the T-Rex will hold its crown as the most powerful meat-eater of all time thanks to its ability to leverage its problem-solving skills and knowing how to use its weapons effectively. But even the strongest can fail when placed out of their element. Both of these creatures are without a doubt marvels of the natural world. And although these creatures never saw each other, we know for certain this would have been one of the most epic clashes in the animal kingdom ever seen in history. Oh, yeah. Special thanks to all the oh. folks who helped us to bring this mini documentary to reality, especially our excellent team of animators, researchers, and our patrons who were aware of this project many months ago. Nice. To be aware of our next big project, join us on Patreon, where you'll be exposed to some cool behind-the-scenes content, vote on topics, direct messaging, and more. If not, then that's cool. You can at least subscribe. Alright, I already subscribed to Goji Center, and yeah. That's all for today's video and I'm and I'll see you in the next video.